The Sumo F6 is an incredible field recorder for professionals and semi-professionals alike. The 32-bit floating point audio recorder and the double AD converters make it a really good audio recorder. I love having this in my studio, working with it for podcasts as well as my videos that I am recording here as I am speaking to you. I've gotten to use this for quite some time now and I have also looked into all kinds of different features. Now, the feature that I want to highlight today is the timecode features of the Zoom F6, the timecode output and input that it has on the side right here, and also the different modes that are available to you. I also want to look into how you can use an external timecode generator like the Tentacle Sync E to actually provide a timecode signal to the Zoom F6 and then overwrite the internal clock. You can also just synchronize the clock once with a device like this and then disconnect it from the Zoom F6 again so that you can still use the Sync E with another camera. Now, if you want to learn more about timecode synchronization specifically, then I would suggest you look at the video description. There is a link for a video and also a playlist about what it is, what it can do for you, and different types of setups and devices that can work with that kind of technology. Here with the Zoom F6, we are talking about a device that has inbuilt timecode with a quartz clock, and that can keep timecode running very accurately for about 12 to 24 hours. Now we have a timecode port right here on the side in form of a mini jack connection. This is super handy because it means that there are no extra super expensive cables that you have to buy to be able to use timecode, but instead you simply have a mini jack connection, which is just a stereo mini jack cable, which you will probably have at home. With this connection, I actually also have a video on the channel where I talk about how you can use this to simply connect that from right here to your camera and that way already have timecode in a camera that usually does not provide timecode because timecode is simply a audio signal and that can be recorded onto a audio track of your camera and then with that you can use that in your NLE for audio timecode synchronization. DaVinci Resolve supports that natively and for Premiere Pro you either have to go through DaVinci Resolve or you can use Tentacle Sync Studio which is a software for timecode synchronization. I will have videos about that linked in that playlist that I just mentioned. And with that, you can figure out all of those things very easily. Now, this port is obviously not everything we need. We need a software integration for these timecode things as well. And for that, we can go back to the front of the device right here. On the F6, we can go into the menu. There we can go to the timecode setting. And here we have a bunch of settings that we can change. Of course, we have the mode right here. We can set either to be external, external auto rec, internal RTC, internal rec, and in internal free run. What I have set up here is that with the ext setting, it actually will take a external timecode as soon as one is connected to the port on the side. That means that the internal clock will take the external signal and adapt that as its own. The cool thing about that is that in a combination with other settings, this will actually be a system where I can connect my Tentacle Sync with this, and then I can disconnect the Tentacle Sync after a few seconds, and the internal clock of the F6 will be synchronized in the same time with all of the other devices that I have previously synced to that Sync E. So that's the mood that I use. Internal free run will mean that it basically just runs continuously as it is set up. It will not take over the external signal in that setting. So that's something that you can use if you just want to have this as a continuously clock. Then we have the rec run. This would mean that it automatically will reset every time you hit the stop button. So it basically just counts as long as you are recording from zero to however long you are recording. Then the internal RTC run. This is the real-time clock. The difference between the RTC run and the free run is that the free run will run as soon as you turn the device on and then it will just continue to count up. So turning it on is zero, 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 zero. And then from there it will count on and on and on as long as you have the Zoom F6 turned on. 
Then we have the internal RTC run, and that's the real-time clock. So if you set the system clock on this device, the RTC run would be that clock or that time continuously going forward as basically the time of day. Then we have external, which I just mentioned. It will take the external signal and then run with that. And the external auto rack, that is a mode that if you have a system that also delivers the information about that it should actually start recording based on time code, then this would be the setting for you. Now the next setting is called TC out, and there we cannot change this setting if we have the external setting on. So if I go back in here and I change it, for example, to RTC run, which would be the real time clock, go back here, and then we only have the TC out setting there. And as you can see, we can either only output a TC signal, so a time code signal, if we are recording on the Zoom F6, or we can always output the time code signal. So that basically would make it possible so that a device also triggers the record as soon as there is time code signal coming. However, I don't usually use that as I've mentioned before. Now going back to the external, we can go in there and then go back. Now we have the other two settings available and there is ext audio sync and that is on and we can turn that off. And we also have ext continues on. So this is the combination that means that external audio sync would mean that if there is a audio timecode signal coming from here, then this internal clock will be synchronized to that signal. And external continues actually means that the external signal will continue to run as the internal signal when you disconnect the timecode signal generator. And that's exactly the setting that I am running for my system here or my setup because I like to use the tentacle syncs on my two cameras and have the Zoom F6 run with its internal clock. However, I also want to have all three of them synchronized. So at the beginning, I turn on the Sync E's, I synchronize them with the Bluetooth app, and then I connect one of the Sync E's to the Zoom F6, wait a couple of seconds for the signal to be picked up, and from that, I can then go back and connect that Sync E to one of my cameras. To demonstrate how this specific setup works with taking an external signal and still continuing with that, we can go back here to the main screen, and then I can take one of these Sync E's that I have here, and this is synchronized, and it is blinking with the green light right there. Now I can put this to the side right there, and you can see there it shows internal 24 frames per second, and then the current clock that is the internal timecode signal. Now if I take this mini jack connection and I plug this into the timecode port, you can see that it will actually take that and show the external 24 frames per second and the clock now is synchronized to that signal that is coming from that Tentacle Sync E timecode generator. However, now if I unplug this, it will instantly go back to internal and the clock time will not change. So this gives me an opportunity to synchronize the F6's signal with the other devices that I also use, but I don't have to waste one Sync E by connecting it continuously to this device and instead I can still use this with other cameras. Now, of course, this also means that I would have to make sure to basically resync that process if I want to continue to use this after I have turned everything off and then on again, because then things might not be in sync anymore. And I cannot wirelessly resync everything if I don't have a tentacle sync connected to this device on all times. But there are actually a couple more settings here, and we can go back into the menu to the time code settings. And here, what you can also see is that not only do you have the mode, which is the part that we just looked at, we also have a lot of settings in terms of frames per second, the jam, the U-bits, auto rec, delay, and start timecode. So the start timecode setting right here, you can see whether or not you want to say restart or real-time clock, and you can also do a calibration and that actually takes about two hours. And the calibration would actually work to basically make sure that based on the climate that you are working in, the quartz or the clock inside is accurate and functioning. 
So that's something that I have done once since I purchased the device and usually I don't touch this again. If I were to travel around the world, I would probably do this whenever I arrive in a new country with new conditions. So that's something to keep in mind there. Then with the other settings in terms of FPS, of course, that's the frames per second. And as you know, right now, we are not running on the external clock. Right now, we are running on the internal one, which continues whilst there is no other source available. So I can still choose to change this setting to be appropriate for the frames per second that we were working with. Right now, I am working with 24 frames per second. Then with the jam setting, this is the one where basically if you have a other setting, like for example, let's change this into a mode setting that's different from external. Let's say we want to use the free run and we do that. Now we can go back here and go to jam. And here on this screen, you can actually see we have the external signal not existing right now and we have the internal clock. Now I can take again the signal from the Tentacle Sync E and in this case, it will actually not automatically take this signal as its source. And it will just display this right here. And now I can choose to restart or jam the signal. So if I go to restart and I say OK, then it actually asks me what time would you like to do as the restart time. Right now it is 16.32.25 and now if I go down here and say restart with 000, now the internal clock is actually set to 0000, 000, 000 and starting from there. Since I said free run, it is continually going from there. So that's why it is also continuously updating. Now if I go here and say jam, whilst we are also having this external time code generator connected, now I can actually hit jam and with that, the signal is going to be synced to the external time code generator. Now, again, I personally prefer to simply use external and have it jam automatically. Basically, it means that as soon as there is a time code generator connected, it will automatically take that signal and work with that and update the internal clock with that as well if I unplug this. So that's why I prefer the external mode. Now going down, we also have the U-bits and the U-bits are additional information that you can store in the timecode audio signal or the timecode metadata and I have set that up to be the date, month, year and then at the end you can set something custom and in that case I have set it to A1 for audio 1. So that's how you can set up these settings, how you can change them around and what I would do with the preferred setting of external, auto update and continue with that external timecode in the internal clock as soon as I disconnect the device. Now that's my overview of the Zoom F6's timecode capabilities. If you have any questions around the topic or have any thoughts or other things, you can leave those in the comment section down below. I would also appreciate a thumbs up for this video if it was helpful. That helps out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Now with that said, I hope you have an amazing day. If you want to watch more videos, you have two right here. And I hope to see you soon in the next video. Ciao, ciao!